Hello, I'm Leticia Miral, a paper magician, and in this paper secret, I'm going to share with you some techniques, tips, and secrets to make your own paper clothes, paper jackets, or paper dresses. Paper dresses and paper costumes in general are quite fun and magical to do. You can do them for a doll, for a marionette, a papier mache doll, an elephant doll, for your daughter, or for yourself. I have made many paper dresses in the past, some which were made to be worn and some which were just sculptures. And today I'm sharing with you tips and tricks to help you make your own paper clothes. So there are many things you need to know before you start to make your very first paper cloth, whether it is a jacket, a dress, a skirt, a bloomer, whatever it is. The first thing that I would really recommend is to work with craft paper. My magical craft paper, which I love to use when I work on a big scale. And when you do paper cloth, most of the time it's going to be for a big scale character, if it's a doll or a human. So I would recommend to work with this one. It's a very inexpensive one, it's about 4 euros, a wall of 10 meters, and if you buy two walls, you can make an entire collection of clothes. So it's a very easy paper to sculpt with, it's very soft and it's slightly glossy on one side. I really like it, the only one thing you have to think about is its noise. Of course, it's going to make some noise. It's not a totally silent paper. So you have to take this into account if you want to make a costume for yourself. Do you need some patterns or can you improvise? So this is a very interesting question. I used both techniques in the past, mainly not using any sort of pattern at all, any measurements, because I hate that. It's the reason I don't sew, because I really hate all these very strict numbers. You have to follow super carefully, otherwise what you're going to do is not going to work. You can work very differently for paper cloth because you are using only paper and glue, you are not sewing, so and you can improvise all the time. Whether you are working with craft paper or with mulberry paper or mixing the two together, you don't need patterns. But it could be very interesting to work with an old pattern you may find in an old book, whether it is a pattern for a dress, a jacket, or even another piece of costume, and to be inspired by that. I'm not really sure it's a good idea to, to follow exactly everything because paper is paper, it's not fabric. There are two limits, though the paper is not going to stretch at all. So you have to think about that if you're doing something which is supposed to stretch at one point, especially if you want to have it on a, on a doll, on yourself, or on a character of some kind. You have to think about that when you're going to put the, the, the piece of the costume on the character to add it and to remove it. So be careful with your paper costumes, whatever the purpose is, if it's a piece for a decor, for a doll, for marionettes, for yourself, for a child, it has to be manipulated with a lot of care. You can't put, I can't put this jacket on my elephant in a few seconds, just like a normal uh, fabric cloth. It doesn't work like that. It's very fragile and it's very, very easy to damage it. So. Be super careful when you adjust it on your character, your doll, your elephant and also when you put it aside um, on a hanger or something, it's a precious little piece of art, it's not a normal cloth, so you have to be really careful when you manipulate it. So how do you sew paper? The very good news is you don't sew paper, it's something really nice with paper clothes and paper costumes, you don't sew, sew them, you only use your glue to glue them and it's very easy, very comfortable 
and you can make some mistakes and come back to them, start again. And it's very, very easy. So you don't have to know anything about sewing before starting your first paper costume. So can you wear a paper costume? Of course you can, absolutely. I'm going to do a series of costumes for myself in a few months and I'm definitely going to wear them. The only thing is, you have to remember, paper and the skin don't go really well together. So I would always suggest if you have the project to wear for a party, for a birthday, for your wedding, for Halloween, for any special event for a party, I would really suggest wear something under it, a very light fabric, piece of fabric, um, dress or, or costume because the paper and the skin don't go well at all together, You're not even any product you may have on your skin but even the pH of your skin is going to damage the paper. Even after a party you can't wash paper at all, it's very difficult to do that, you're going to damage it. So. And it's going to change the color, to change the, the glossy part of it and to really make it grey and dirty. So always have something before wearing the piece of costumes you have made. By doing things and clothes in paper. So the very very funny thing is it's super easy to do, it's very fun, it doesn't cost anything. You can have exactly the colors, the patterns you want. And you can also make a specific piece of costume to match something you already have. Like you can make a collar or something for your neck which is going to match a dress you have. You only have to think about the comfort because glue and paper can hurt your skin. You always have to wear something both to protect the piece of costume you have done and also to protect yourself because glue and all that will make very, very sharp angles. So don't forget that. But it's very easy to create a, a, even a small piece of costume to match something you already have. And of course, for your dolls, for any character doll you have in your house, you can create an entire wardrobe for them. Now, I'm going to share with you a slice of my very last workshop, a wardrobe for an elephant, which is a workshop which will teach how to make some paper clothes from the beginning to the end and it also includes some PDFs, so you are really guided step by step to make them. We are making a dress, a collar, a jacket, a skirt and a cloak, so really the basis which can help you to create and make tons of variations around that. And I'm going to share here just a slice of the jacket part. You will have to adjust all your pleats over there at the top of the jacket. So just be careful. I will, I will mainly sculpt it on my elephant because it's a little easier. And this way I can really see what I need, what I don't need. It's, it's much more comfortable like that. So I'm going to adjust all these pleats over there. It's nice just to scut them and to see if you think you have too much. In the 18 they had a lot of pleats like that, but maybe you don't want so many pleats. So I think I will scut a big one over there. So I will see, I will, we will really adjust them all over there. Maybe we won't need everything, so I think I won't need all that. I will remove a bit of this because I think I won't need all that. This was the pattern I chose but I, I, I want to adapt it. It's not, we are not really working with the sewing technique where you need to do things super precise or that we can change things really as we want. So I think I want to, I would like to adjust it on one side to see how it works. I want to have one pleat really defined over there so maybe I will do that. So only use it, add it on the red part here. Going to add it over there and try to sculpt. You can add a bit of glue at about this, this size over there, but if you add some glue everywhere, it's going to be not flexible at all anymore. So you just always remember that. I'm going to check this one, how it works, and I will do the same on the other side. So 
check first the parts of the back of the jacket. I'm going to add a tiny strip. We're going to do a little decor on top of this because it's, it's very fragile and we need to have it really well secured. I want to add a bit of of paper here. We will do a ruffle or something else later. So I use that first. That's the technique we use to secure things all the time. But here we need to do it here. Even if it's on top of the beautiful paper we have because we have no choice. So here I would like to have also on my red part here. So of course you take a piece of red paper which is on the leftovers, you don't use something really nice like your sleeve. It's really not a good idea. So we are going to see. I want to see how it works on the back. Maybe we're going to secure another strip on the back too. I will add another strip. I'm just careful that it doesn't glue on my bloomer and uh, on my elephant. So I'm just adding here another strip to be sure everything goes well together. You can remove it, of course, if you prefer. For the moment, I really prefer building it on my elephant. Just be really, really careful. Go slowly, take your time. For the color, I'm going to cut all that. It was slightly too wide. It was working, but I want to have more space. Now let's do the other side. So I have already cut a bit, it's not clean there, but a bit higher. The piece I have at the middle, at the middle of my jacket here, I find it's better, it will give a bit a better look. Um, I had my piece which was all torn apart, so it's perfect, it's going to match my the problem, problem I had. Here you can also tell I had few problems here, doesn't really matter, we're going to glue all that on top of this a little higher, so really on the hip. You can start where you want, I think I'm going to start maybe here. You can already scaled a few pleats and remove what you don't want. Maybe you don't want to have all that. So let's see. We will we adjust them all together. So let's maybe we don't want all this after all. I'm going to remove a bit of that. I, uh, I have already prepared some strips and I add my glue only on the jacket, not on anything else. Even if you are using an object, a round object to build your jacket, just be careful. So that we can do that and we will apply our striped paper on top of it. It's not this it's not a good one, but we will do a little something like that on the other side. Just get clean everywhere. Okay, so let's see how it works when he is seated, when he is standing. So we have all these pleats over there. Here it's quite nice. I like that it works, it goes a little on the back. We try to have the same on the other side. It's really an 18th century jacket I'm doing here. So. Yes, I need to have this part a little more secure because it's very fragile. Maybe I will cut a bit shorter here. And yes, we will do the same on the other side, just to have the pleats uh, at the same length everywhere. So here I will cut, yes, I will cut a little shorter here because it was a little too long to my taste. We do the same here. I 
I think it's quite nice. So you see it's really an 18th century jacket where the pieces on the front go really on the back. It's, it's made on purpose. I think it's quite fun. So you need to have something pretty, of course, on the front. I have my waistcoat from the Elephant Dal, which is a little fragile. I will have to remove, to put back some buttons at some point. I think now we are going to adjust all the pieces together. You can still readjust. Sometimes you have one piece which is short, one which is long. Here they are quite working well, so I'm going to glue them together. So, if you want to join me and make your own paper clothes, you can enroll in the Wild Warp for an Elephant, which is a workshop which teach to make paper clothes for the Elephant Dog, which is another workshop I have made. You can buy them separately or you can have them in bundle and make all the clothes we do in the elephant doll and the other ones. These ones are all removable. The clothes we are doing in the wardrobe for an elephant can all be removed, which means you can really have them as a piece of decor. You can have them on your elephant. You can adapt them for another purpose, like for an adult, for example. I'm not giving all the measurements for an adult, but it's pretty easy if you want to adapt that for another bigger character than an elephant doll. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you think you have friends which might be interested in paper clothes, paper dresses or paper jackets, you can share this video with them. And if you don't want to miss my next paper secrets, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. You can ask me your questions and comments just under this video. I'm always happy to read them and to reply to them. You can do that both on YouTube or on my blog. And I see you very soon. So in this first module, we are going to make the color, which is a waffle color. And uh, but if I wanted to wear it, it could work. It's really not comfortable and you really need to make it a little wider if you want to have it for a person, but it could work for a party, for a few hours, it could work.